Hello, welcome to the Launching VSRX in the Amazon Web Services Environment Learning Bite. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. After successfully completing this Learning Bite, you will be able to launch the VSRX in the Amazon Web Services Environment. Juniper Networks has made our VSRX, our Virtual SRX Firewall, available in the Amazon Web Services Marketplace. So you can use this for many different security use cases. It can be a firewall uh, that's used to protect other enterprise cloud compute resources that you have running inside of your Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. It can be used to establish VPNs to connect your private and your public cloud resources together. Right, so there's there's a litany of use cases that are available for this platform running inside of the Amazon Web Services environment. I'm going to demonstrate for you how to launch the virtual SRX inside of the Amazon Web Services environment. I learned how to do that by downloading this free day one guide from the Juniper Networks website. This is a day one guides are a series. There's dozens of these free eBooks. You download them in PDF format. They're available from the URL that you see here on the screen. You can create a free JNet account. It gives you free access to all of these day one guides. Uh, I didn't have to read the entire day one guide. I read about the first 30 or so pages, and it showed me how to launch the virtual SRX inside of the AWS environment. Uh, but it includes additional information uh, pertaining to specific customer use cases, specific functionality that people take advantage of in the virtual SRX in the Amazon Web Services environment. So find the use case that really matches what you're trying to, to do, and then read the additional information to help you enable that functionality for your environment. To access the Amazon Web Services site, I'm going to open a web browser, browse to aws.amazon.com, and I'll click on the console button that appears on the screen. Doing that will prompt me to log in. So you'll have to create a user account, username, password, provide some credit card, you know, some billing information. And the console is where I'm going to start building uh, my environment. So from the services menu in the console section, I'm going to scroll down. And under networking and content delivery, you'll see VPC. I need to build my virtual private cloud environment. So I'm going to select that. And once it loads, there is a wizard that I can use to walk through this, but I'm going to follow the instructions from the day one guide and click on your VPCs and walk you through this. Okay. So I'm going to create a virtual private cloud. I'm going to give it a name, right? So whatever you'd like. And I need to specify a CIDR block that I want to use to later create subnets uh, inside of my environment. So, so pick something that will work for you. I'm going to, I'm not going to create an IP version six CIDR block. I'm going to, I don't need a dedicated server for this, this virtual machine that I'm going to later create to run on. So I'm going to leave the tenancy values to, at, at default. Click Create to create my virtual private cloud environment. My next step is I need to create a subnet, right? So in the menu on the left-hand side, I'm going to click Subnets. Create Subnet. Give it a name. associate this with the virtual my virtual private cloud environment that I just created in the previous screen and I'm going to create an IP version sort IP version 4 CIDR block from that virtual private cloud uh, subnet that I defined earlier so this is a, a subnet that I can then assign to an interface later on I'm going to click create and then my next step is going to be to create an internet gateway. So again, from the menu on the left-hand side, I will select internet gateways, create an internet gateway, and give it a name. Once I create the gateway, my next step would then be to attach this gateway to my virtual private cloud environment. So under actions, I'll select attach to VPC, and I'll be able to select the virtual private cloud environment we defined in the first step. Okay, so I'll select my VPC and attach it. So I created a gateway, I created a virtual cloud environment. Now I need to create a default route so traffic can leave my virtual cloud environment. So I'm going to select route tables from the menu on the left-hand side. There's a routes tab at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to click Edit Routes. 
And, and, and so here's the, the 10 block that I created earlier. I want to add a route. And this is simply going to be a default route that I, that I want to create. So I can select a you know, predefined default route and hit the drop down arrow and assign that default route or, or have the, you know, the target of this default route be the my gateway, internet gateway that we just defined. Right? So let me save that route. So this will be the route out of my virtual cloud environment through my, my internet gateway device. Right? So my virtual private cloud environment has been set up. Now my next step is to create my enterprise cloud compute instance, which is how we will launch the virtual SRX into this virtual private cloud environment. So from the services menu, under compute, I'll, I'll select EC2. Right. And then I will select launch instance. Right. And now I need to search for the virtual SRX Amazon machine image. So in the in the search box, I'll type V SRX and hit enter. And now this is a this is not Amazon native, this is a third party, you know, Juniper Network software that runs in the Amazon Web Services environment. So there are three results in the Amazon Web Services marketplace. And so I select that. And I'll see my virtual SRX options. There are three different ones. One of the differences that you'll see, there's a couple different licensing models available for you. Uh, there's what's called a pay-as-you-go license, which means you can run the virtual SRX in the AWS environment, and you pay based on how much it's used, how, how much is it running, right? Uh, you, you may also uh, already have a, a license for an SRX device is currently running in your network and you want to transfer that license and use it in the Amazon Web Service. It's called the, the bring your own license environment. But there's another version. There's a third version of the virtual SRX available in the Amazon Web Services marketplace where it's the virtual SRX, uh, but it also has antivirus features enabled. So if you, if you need that functionality, this would be the, the machine image that I, that I would launch. I'm going to just take our standard virtual SRX firewall. Uh, that's the Amazon machine image I want to I want to use so I'm going to select that and there's some setup involved uh, this was, again was the pay as you go license model there's a free 30 day trial uh, version of the SRX and what that does is it saves me this column the software licenses that I would pay uh, in my pay as I go model based on how much I use this platform right um, I, so so this will be free for the first you know 30 days. Now, uh, I still have to pay the Amazon Web Services infrastructure fees uh, to use their infrastructure to launch this, but I don't have to pay the software licensing fees for the first 30 days. There, there's more information if you scroll down to the bottom about how to use this, some usage instructions, some, some licensing and some support information. So if that's of interest to you, make sure you, you analyze that output. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click continue. I've selected the Amazon. The, the virtual SRX that I would like to use. Now, there's different flavors, different types of instances that you can launch based on the performance needs that will meet your, you know, use case. Uh, so you can you can select, you know, the how many CPUs, how much memory, how much storage, right? How much throughput will your virtual SRX require to, to perform the functions you need it to? Now, I'm just going to leave the default here so I can take the the free instance. Right, here's the version that I'll get with the free 30-day trial license. So I'm just trying to learn how to get this up and running, learn how to use this in my virtual private cloud environment. So I'm gonna I can click, you know, I can I can launch it. I can take the default settings and launch it. I'm gonna go the manual route. So let's configure this the details of, of this instance. Uh, with the free version, I'm gonna launch one instance of the virtual SRX. It's already been assigned to the virtual private cloud that we defined in the first steps on this learning by. I already have a subnet created. What I do want to make sure I do, once I do get this virtual SRX up and running in AWS, I want to be able to connect to it remotely. So I want it to receive a public IP address. So I need to hit the drop down arrow here and select enable. Now I want to assign some storage to it. There's a default value of just some standard storage. I can hit the drop down arrow. If I need higher performance, maybe select some SSD uh, storage type if I'd like. I can change the storage type. I can encrypt the storage of this of this virtual SRX. I'm just going to accept the defaults here and click next. And I have the option to I don't have to do this, but I can create a tag or several tags to so if I want to be able to search for this or organize this. If I have several virtual machines running in my virtual private cloud, uh, I, I can 
more easily organize and find these, these virtual machines if I add up labels to them, essentially. I'm just going to add a name label, right? And I'll call it a VSRX or whatever makes sense to you. Uh, but again, you can specify any number of tags that you need to better help you identify uh, this instance later on. So I'm going to assign a name to it. Now, configuring security groups uh, allows me to determine, okay, I, I said I would like this platform to receive a public IP address so that I can then you know, connect to it remotely and configure it and monitor and manage it. And so what protocols would you like to use to be able to connect to this platform? I'm going to connect using Secure Shell, for example. I, I don't want HTTP access, so, so I'm going to click the X there. But you can add rules. Now, this is just, I'm doing a demonstration here, right? And, and so I'm going to launch this virtual SRX, and I'll be able to connect to it remotely using Secure Shell. I'm going to leave this pretty wide open because as soon as this learning byte's done, I'm going to tear this instance down. But this is where I specify the source address of who can connect to this using Secure Shell. And right now I'm leaving this really wide open, and that's what this warning message is about. I don't care right now, but in real life you would, right? So specify the IP addresses of who would be allowed to connect to this instance remotely and then manage it. So I'm going to click the Review and Launch button now. And again, it, it comes up and asks me, hey, do you, remember there's, there's a couple of storage options here for you. I'm just going to continue with the default that I, I selected earlier and say Next. And, and again, I, I'm going to get, get a warning here about, hey, you know, you, you did leave this pretty wide open. Anybody can connect to this once you get this up and running using Secure Shell. Um, and, and, and it's not completely free to use this. Remember, the Juniper, the 30-day trial gives me free licensing for 30 days, but I still have to pay the infrastructure charges uh, for to run this in the Amazon Web Services environment. So just a couple of notices there. I'm going to click launch. Now, to connect to this remotely, I need to authenticate to it using keys, authentication keys. So I need to generate a key pair. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit the drop down arrow and say, create a new key pair. I'm going to give it a name, something that, that, that you can remember later. And I'm going to download that to my management station. I'm going to save it to my desktop so I can find it. I'm really good at finding things on my desktop. So I'm going to save that key pair to my local workstation. So that's done. And now that my key pair is generated and I can authenticate to it once it is up and running, I'm simply going to say launch instances. Now, it will take a few minutes for the virtual SRX instance to get up and running, right? And, and so uh, I can, you know, my, it's launching currently. Right, and, and I can scroll down to the bottom and click the View Instances button. And it will take me to a dashboard where, where I can, here's my virtual SRX, you know, it, it, it's running, but, but really it's initializing. And it will take, again, a few minutes for it to get up and, and running. And another key thing for me, it will, the, the screen will automatically refresh, and so I'll get updates and I'll know when it's ready to be connected to. And uh, then I'll see the public IP address. Remember, I enabled a public IP address to be assigned to this virtual SRX instance. And this is what I would be able to use to secure shell into my virtual SRX once it's completely initialized and booted. So this is the, there are the steps, the minimum steps necessary to get a virtual SRX instance up and running in the Amazon Web Services environment. So in this learning by we launched the virtual SRX firewall from Juniper Networks in the Amazon Web Services environment. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.